You're getting into robotics and things are confusing. Hardware, software, mathematics. What, where should you start? You should get a robot or build from scratch. And what is the roadmap? What is the checklist? These are the confusions that I have been asked a lot. So in this video, I will try to solve it, provide you the roadmap and all necessary material. So you can get into robotics in a way that I think is the fastest way to learn robotics practically. Starting with the very first part, you need to get a robot. This is a essential because robotics is a physical thing. So having a robot building algorithms and software upon it and visually experiencing it is going to help you get stick to this project and learn easily. What are the things that you should be doing? You have two options, buy a robot kit and build it from scratch. Personal experience, build it from scratch. It is going to give you an understanding of physical knowledge, 3D modeling, electronics, and how the whole body and heart of the robot actually works because this is essential for a robotics engineer to understand. So build it from scratch. The next question is what type of robot you need to be building is two wheel differential drive. You can buy the 3d model but electronics should be done by yourself so you understand the electronic flow sensor requirement microcontroller requirement on all of these things no need to directly start from very high end electronics of the robot a very high powered robot just keep it simple two wheel differential drive it's very cheap just to understand how to control the robot and how to read the sensor that's the main objective the next step is to understand the components in this robot. As we have introduced electronics related things, microcontroller, battery, motors, motor driver, you need to spend some time to understand what are the purpose of each component from electronics power side and what they actually do in the robotic ecosystem. As the first step for a robotics engineer is to drive the robot, which don't need actually any sensors. Motors are required and power is required but microcontroller is required to send signals. So you do forward, left, right, and understand what is the total capacity or capability of the robot, how much it can move in the environment. We call it locomotion. And for a differential drive mobile robot, it's quite simple. So that's why we are starting with this robot. Understand and build confidence from the software side to control it from left, right, forward, backward, which enforces you to understand the purpose of each component till now without sensors and controlling of these motors which is the essential thing you have the robot and you have the control of the robot you can drive it next step is to make the robot understand the environment around it so we bring in sensors at this point people overcomplicate by finalizing a very high powered autonomous system application and start building it from the very scratch and it's their first experience with the robot so don't do this make it simple make it do only one task with only one sensor starting with as an example i would say perform line following or perform obstacle avoiding or perform wall following that requires distance measurement so one sensor giving you the distance and you start building a project around it that this robot is going to do one thing and that is avoid obstacles or going to stop near the obstacles if there is any one basic decision because of the sensor that's what you have to understand and learn that now the velocity control things are going to be done by the sensors data sort of algorithm that you have to write on the software side what you learn is understanding the data coming from the sensor and you writing an output based on that data this is important thing that you have to learn and what you start to do is to then add more sensors add more algorithms for input and output on the velocity and that's how you gradually increase the capability of your robot for understanding the environment now the next step is mathematics in robotics and probabilities you have the sensors they provide you data but those sensors might not be accurate and the robot repetition of the same task is going to be inaccurate for example of an encoder in the robot it is going to be giving a very small value per revolution so it is going to generate inaccuracies at this point what you are going to do you are going to improve your output with mathematical equations statistical behavior and probabilities for estimating the output from the robot with the error being accumulated over time. So this is the point where you bring in statistics and probability in robotics and improve the outcome based on your requirement and the application. So make sure that you are now improving the results from the sensors and then obviously the decisions for the velocities are going to get improved. So the project that I'm referring is performing odometry. 
taking values from the encoder and deciding the robot's location in the world map of x y that tells the robot that robot is at 10 of x and 5 of y from the initial position that is going to be done through encoders next step is autonomous behavior of the robot it is not like doing a lot of tasks for your robot but as we are taking the encoder project further we are going to just call it autonomous for the reason that we are going to tell it go to this point in x and y the robot goes to that automatically this is autonomous behavior at its basic level so in this project i am just focusing on the step of improvement on the result you have the robot, you brought in the encoder sensor, you wrote the XYZ calculation, then the goal that you are going to send to the robot, then the algorithm that you write is going to produce a velocity command that the robot is going to take. So mathematics in calculating the robot XYZ trigonometry equation, probability for smoothing the robot location, all of that combines and produce sensor planning and act behavior from the robot this whole process completes and you improve the results this is the step most essential for your understanding and building confidence on robotics that you command the robot takes the sensor reading and produces an output so the robot takes physical action upon that Till this point, we have written a lot of code, reading sensor, applying mathematics and generating velocity output. This is the time to perform optimization on programming software development side, because most of the time that we were doing earlier was just to make the application work. But now you have to improve your code in three different categories. First, organization of the code, libraries, object oriented programming and classes and these kind of stuff. The next is GitHub and version control of it. This should be done through the start, but let's say that now you understand. So you create version controls, versions of your code. So you want to shift into the back version, perfect. An update, save it to the cloud. The third, the most important one, documentation. You have done some work, you want to show somebody or you want to add someone into the team to work on this project, then documentation helps the other person to understand what you have done. And it should be much easier for the second person to understand just by reading the documentation. It should not be the case that they should call you and understand what you have done here. The documentation of the code should express it in a way that it should explain the installation part, what it does and how to run it, where improvements are required, all the planning for the future for the next person or anyone you are displaying your project as your work for job application or research proposals. This is all about documenting the work and improving the quality of the code. So this is the timeline that we are talking about. Get a robot, add sensors, write code to generate velocity, optimize algorithm, optimize the code and document. So in these basic steps and roadmap, it is going to give you a confidence on robotics projects and generally on robotics understanding how they work. It is not going to be one day or one week project as you are going to do in steps. It might take months based on the experience you have, but this roadmap is what helped me in becoming a good robotics developer and teaching people how to build software for robots. So this is the starting point. Just make sure that you reach the end of the timeline of documentation for each project. So you can express the work and you can improve or other people can improve your work and look at understand it. 